Hey everybody, welcome to my Let's Play of Eminem Shell Shock. I've never Let's Played before, so let me quickly explain why I'm doing this. I was at a gaming slash comic book slash used movies slash used everything store, and I saw this. I was looking through the uh, PlayStation 1 games because I really want to use my PS1 more. And they're all about $5 at this store. Except for this. It was $11. I quickly looked online and saw it was a knockoff of Crash Bandicoot. Apparently a really shameless one. I was intrigued. An $11 advert game. It's about twice as much as any of the other games I was seeing at this store. I had to try it. I had to play it. I had to... Let's play it. So... Let's give it a go. Let's see what it has to offer us. There's not a lot of options on our title menu, so let's see if there's more options on the options menu. The controls on these menus aren't great. It takes a while to uh, register our button presses, or even our control pad presses. And uh, looking at the controls in the manual, well, we can only use the control pad. This game came out in September of 2001, and it doesn't support the control stick. Whew. Well, may maybe the game helped us come together after 9-11. Maybe it brought the whole country together. Maybe that's why it was $11. Well, my yellow fellow, it's time these M&Ms had a little R&R. R&R? &R. R &R? Is that a new candy? Are we being phased out? We are going on vacation. Come on! One last thing before we arrivederci. Who did you leave in charge of the candy factory? Hello? It's what? They what? And what? You're turning red. Er. Repeat after me. I did not leave the M&M's Minis in charge of the candy factory. Has your chocolate melted? Have you gone completely nuts? Well, the minis aren't that bad. All they need is a chance. All you need is a brain donor. Get to the factory, pronto! There's a minis mutiny going on. They've stolen the formulas for all the M&M's candies. Stop those minis, find those formulas. Go, go, go! There goes my partner. Hm, there goes my career. Well, that was uh, a bit of a surprise. I didn't realize that we'd be getting cinematics in this game. And the surprises only continue from here. In fact, hey, that looked pretty good. The voice acting was pretty good. And did you get a load of that writing? You see, the yellow one is the peanut M&M. And Red is his official name. He asked him if he was nuts. It's pretty good. So yeah, this is supposed to be a Crash Bandicoot knockout, or knockoff. The manual mentions the controls are move with the control pad and jump with X with a special move that's controlled by two buttons. And it mentions nothing about driving. So I had no idea what I was doing when I first played this. I wanted to do a blind run and well, after seeing this, I had to quickly at least understand how to play this before recording anything. At least the checkpoints are pretty, uh, pretty lenient, so if you do happen to hit anything, you won't be going back too far. And the game makes it so that you're not that prone to hitting things. Your hitboxes aren't too bad. It seems like hitbox is the width of the front of the car and the back of your car doesn't really exist. The controls are bad, though. Your car doesn't seem to be aligned very... What were those explosions? Your car doesn't seem to be aligned very well. And uh, you, you drift around and your turning isn't that responsive. So it takes a little bit to get a handle on what you're doing. It really takes a bit to get a handle on why you're driving in this game that was, well... 
advertised as a platformer. The manual doesn't tell you anything about the driving, at least in the control section or the story section. And, well, yeah. So, we're doing this, we're collecting M&M's minis, which seems like a bad idea. The, uh, the opening cutscene made it seem like the, the minis were this, well, horrendous mob that was destroying the factory. Wait a minute, isn't this an advert game? Shouldn't this make us want to buy M&M's? Especially M&M's minis, because they seem to be one of the focus of the game? That's, that's weird. I don't want to buy something that's, you know, destroying a factory. And wait a minute, this level is the factory, but we don't seem to be anywhere near the factory. And, and what's with the bikers and the giant dragster hot rod? Why were all the cars going the wrong way on the road? And doing illegal U-turns? Are the minis doing this? Why are we now in the middle of the mountains? Where is this factory? Also, uh, if you hit anything, it's, uh, it's a one-hit kill. So, uh, don't hit those septic trucks. Don't hit those septic trucks. Just keep collecting the minis and getting extra lives for a hundred of them. Apparently the minis are good, even though they're, you know, the worst villain of the game, at least that we know of. They, uh, they're destroying M&Ms, they're destroying the formula, but if we get a hundred, we get an extra life. And we can survive hitting more septic trucks that way. So yeah, let's just keep going, and uh, you can get a good look at the hitbox just there. That car seemed to clip the back end of our, uh, our little... What are we driving? Is it a Jeep? A Jeep? I don't know. Well, it seemed to hit the back end, and we didn't take any damage or die or whatever, so that's good. You know, the game is forgiving. The controls aren't forgiving, but the game is. The sound isn't forgiving. I mean, listen to it. Those are some great sound effects. We keep hearing what seems to be like a cash register and a scream of the minis, which makes it even less palatable to think about eating these things. And there's music and bad foley when we hit a car. Well, you know, it's not claiming to be the best game ever made. It certainly has some high points. You know, I thought the opening cinematic looked good, and the voice acting was fine. And we can hit the sides, apparently, which is really bad at that turn because the septic truck is taking up half of the turn. And, well, the way the car drifts when you turn... You're going to hit the side. Yeah, I am going to hit it one more time, as you're going to see. Because, you know, it's 2007. I'm not going to cut anything out of this. No way. You're just going to see me hitting the side again. Again and again. And uh, trying to figure out a way to get my car to turn so it misses the safety truck but doesn't hit the side. Well, here's my solution. T try to turn into the safety truck. Yeah, so... This is a really odd game design choice where we're just driving and going over jumps. What a weird, weird way to get to a factory. But that's the level, and now we're on to Zone C. Maybe this will actually be the factory. Maybe the third part of this factory level will contain a factory. Spoilers, it doesn't. Now, I've got a question for everyone. Is this a bad loading time? I haven't played that much PlayStation 1, so I think this is a pretty normal loading time. And honestly, I think the graphics seem pretty good. Like, the opening cutscene looked good, sounded good. You know, for a PlayStation 1 game, it's very simple, but it seems like the graphics aren't too bad. It doesn't look that ugly. That looks pretty ugly, though. I wanted to see if maybe the pause menu gave me some instructions on how to handle this car. Maybe if I could do anything, because pressing buttons didn't seem to work and the instruction manual didn't do anything, and a giant cow was running across the street. Perhaps the cow that gives us the milk chocolate in our m &Ms? I hope not. Well, now the bikers are after us, so this has gone from the men drinking coffee adver game let's play to the ride to hell one. And the cow is back, because we're back at the start of the level after hitting the bike. Hopefully we won't hit too many more bikes because I'm really getting tired of driving. I'm really getting tired of hearing 
mini screen. I'm really getting tired of not playing Crash Bandicoot. Although maybe this is Crash Bandicoot. I've never played Crash Bandicoot, so for all I know, Crash Bandicoot is about driving a Jeep on a road where bikers are trying to kill you. Yeah, if I'm wrong about that, let me know. I'm new to all this. I had a Nintendo 64 growing up, so when Mario 64 didn't have a, a Jeep driving simulator, well, that just seemed normal to me. But maybe in more popular games, on a more popular system, this is just all normal. At least there's the jumps. That, that brings a little variety, I guess. And like I said, at least the hitboxes are forgiving, because if I had hit that bike, I'd be pissed. It's, yeah. We're still driving this car. We've still got all these bikers coming after us. Why are the bikers coming after us? Are they the M&M's minis that we're also collecting? They're the villain of the game that we want to buy because this is an advert game, but they're also a collectible that gives us extra lives. And, oh, we're finally at the factory. Here goes nothing. Wait, little friend. Maybe it's time to ask who's the best candy for the job. Maybe this calls for the ringer, the top gun, the go-to guy. Nah, you're right. You go. Wish me luck. Miracles happen every single day. They do. We're dead. He seems really scared of the minis. I'm never eating those things. Well, that was the first three zones of the factory. And now we're at the factory, so I'm going to cut this off here. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll join me next time. Thanks for watching.